Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So before I get into anything, I need to apologize. Uh, this will be my first video in about five weeks and I am really sorry about that. Work just got really busy. I've got a new job that I start next week. So I've been trying to wrap everything up. Then I got really ill with the flu for like two weeks. So I was like out <laughs> cold for pretty much two weeks. I'm just finally starting to get back into the swing of things. I'm sorry, I'm still a little bit ill. So if I sound a bit off, that is why. It's been a very long time and I'm thinking Things are starting to calm down again so I'm hoping I can get back into the swing of things but we'll see we'll see my life's a bit hectic at the minute just with work and whatnot so anyway I am really sorry but I am back as you can see in the title down below today we will be talking about the mid-year freak out tag so I've kind of I'm a few weeks I'm a few weeks late to be honest end of June has been and gone but I thought I would do it anyway because it just sounds like a bit of fun so I keep all of my books on this spreadsheet and I have like loads of information like page count, uh, how long it took me to read, my rating. Yeah, I do have a few. I've been, I've been working for you guys. I've been taking notes, I'm prepared. So just a few stats. So I'm gonna go from January 1st to the end of June, those six months. So anything I've ra read in July, I will not count in this video. I have read eight books so far in July but I'm not counting them at all so yeah this is just the books from January to the end of June so in total I read 55 books in that time period uh, a total pages read I read 20,683 pages which sounds really impressive actually I, I'm quite proud of myself for that one um, an average read time was 13.8 days and I know what that's so long and it's because I read multiple books at a time so it takes me a very long time to finish a single book because they're so staggered you know I'll start a book but in the <laughs> meantime while I'm reading them I'll finish two or three others so that's why it takes so long and then my average rating was 4.06 so yeah I'm <laughs> I like a lot of books and I, I I've never rated a book one star ever um, my lowest has been two stars I don't know I just I really enjoy books and I struggle to rate things <laughs> lower than they probably should be but that's just me so yeah those are my stats so those 55 books are what I'm going to be talking about in these mid-year freak out tags all of the books that I talk about will be linked in the description box down below if you enjoy this video please hit the like button subscribe if you want to see more of my content and if you hit that little notification bell you'll be notified when I post a video hopefully I'll be posting more frequently again um, <laughs> But yes, I sincerely hope you enjoy this video, so let's just get into it. All right. So in the mid-year book freak out tag, there are a series of 13 questions, um, which I've answered to the best of my ability, but some of them have been like, you know, what is your best book? And I, I couldn't decide. I could not decide just one book. So I'm sorry about that, but it's just all fun, isn't it? So... Yeah, the very first question is the best book that I've read so far in 2021. Um, now I've chosen three books for this <laughs> and I could not decide. I'm gonna go in chronological order of when I read them. So the first one I read was um, Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. I loved that book so much. I cannot tell you how much I love that book. Yeah, I listened to it on Audible and I, I just loved it. It was one of my, well, it was one of my favorite reads so far. Um, I have since listened to the entire trilogy, one of my favourite trilogies this year so far, hands down, one of my favourite series of all time I think, I loved it. So yeah, Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa, really enjoyed that. Then there was, um, I forgot to get it out, um, I then, another one that I really loved was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Now this is a difficult read and I say... It was, yeah, it was a five star. It was one of my favorite books of the year, but please, if you are considering reading this, please check trigger warnings beforehand because it covers a lot of really difficult, uncomfortable topics and it might be difficult at times. Um, so yes, please check trigger warnings before you read this book. But that being said, if you are comfortable with those trigger warnings, please read this book. It was so beautiful and heart-wrenching and follows the story of young Vanessa who is a 14 year old girl who starts in a new school and in her new school um, is an English teacher 
who I think he was he's mid 40s I can't remember his age specifically I think he was 46 and it follows a story of him grooming Vanessa now it is like I said a very difficult read but if you are willing and comfortable to read a book about a middle-aged man grooming a 14 year old girl it's fantastic it is beautiful it's cut between the storyline of Vanessa as a young girl and then Vanessa as a middle mid 30 year old woman um, and it's just showing the effects of the grooming and what happened to her in her childhood um, and kind of explaining the processes of what's gone through her mind due to that. Yeah, it's really eye-opening as well because a lot of people who have been groomed don't realise it and this shows why they don't realise it. So yeah, very difficult read but fantastic, five out of five. And then my other <laughs> top book of the year was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Now I actually got this out of the library and I read it in four hours. I could not put it down. And then I proceeded to talk about it nonstop to George and would not shut up about it to the point where he literally had to buy me a copy. <laughs> and I, I'm very sorry that I annoyed him that much, but at the same time, like I got a book out of it, I'm not complaining. <laughs> so yeah, The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo is beautiful. Oh my gosh, the writing in this book is incredible. I cannot, I cannot say that enough. If you do not know what The Poet X is about, I have done a quick review on my channel, which I will link somewhere around here. And if not, I will put it in the description box down below. But yeah, it was beautiful and I loved it. Second question, best sequel of the year. Now this was really easy for me to choose because uh, I've actually only read two full series this year and this was by far the best sequel just in terms of, you know, the book and the pacing. And it was A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas from the ACTAR series. This book was just in comparison to the first one, it was so much better. It's like so much better, it, ridiculously. So A Call of Mr. Fury, that was my best sequel of 2021. Akatar was not my favorite series though of the year so far, that was Shadow of the Fox. This was, yeah, the best sequel, just because in comparison to the first, this was way better. So yes. New releases I haven't read yet that I really want to. Now, I was gonna choose one book, but I realized that I wanted to include that for a question down below. Um, so I'll leave that one for now. Another one that I really want to get to, and this was one that George surprised me with. Bless him, he's so sweet. Uh, it was Realm Breaker by Victoria Aviard. I really want to read this, and yeah, I just cannot wait to read it. Look at the map of this. Like, it's freaking beautiful. Uh, so that is, very high on my priority. I really want to read it. At the same time, I really struggle reading the f like any series where I don't have the full series, where I can't just binge read it all. I really like have this mental block where I can't do it. So I may have to just push past it and just read this because I really want to. Um, but yeah, that is a, kind of my most anticipated book to read that has been released recently. Number four, my most anticipated release for the rest of the year. And there are a few of them, but I think my most anticipated release would probably have to be Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I follow Stephanie Garber on Instagram as well, and I'm always seeing posts about it. So I think that's why I'm so hyped for this book. It's also from the author of Caraval, which I really want to read this year as well. That is another anticipated read for this year. And it's her new series that she's bringing out um, and I'm super excited about it. So yes, that is my most anticipated release for the rest of the year. I suppose my other one would be Under the Whispering Door and it is by TJ Klune who also wrote The House in the Cerulean Sea which I'm pretty sure a lot of people know and love. I have yet to read it but I am getting it for my birthday very soon. So that's The House in the Cerulean Sea. So yeah, that is another anticipated release. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, follows the story of a man who dies and the reaper that comes to collect his soul. Uh, the man who died falls in love with him and refuses to move on. Yeah, I'm just super excited about that. So those are my two really like anticipated releases. Um, number five, this one might, this one might get me some comments. Uh, these are my biggest disappointments of the year. Uh, now I have two that really stand out to me that I was so disappointed by. 
Um, the first was The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. It was so, it just like, it just missed, it, it just didn't do what I wanted it to do, if that makes sense. Uh, and this book is freaking beautiful. Like it's the most beautiful, like under the dusk Javit, Javit? Under the dusk, under the dust jacket artwork. Why did I struggle so much with that? Uh, yeah, but look at that. Like it's beautiful and the premise sounded amazing. It really sounded, I just didn't, I just didn't work for me. I gave it two out of five, which again, like I was saying before, was the lowest I've ever rated books. I just wanted it to be so much more than it was. It was really slow paced, just boring. Oh, it's not, I hate talking bad about books, but yeah, it just did not do what I wanted to do. I didn't really understand half the time what was going on in this book. The only thing that I enjoyed was um, a slight romance, I suppose, and it also had a pretty good twist in the middle, which I did not see coming at all, but that was the only kind of thing that was like, yeah, okay, I'll give it two stars. But other than that, it was just so slow, so tedious. It was just very repetitive. And there were three, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, there were three points of views and I literally only cared for one of them. And even that one, I was just kind of like, it was a bit more interesting, but the other two, I could not care less about the other two point of views. And that sounds so bad, but like, I, w I never skim read a book, but I was so tempted. I was tempted to not finish this and I never don't finish books, so. Yeah, The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. I really wanted to love it and it just didn't do it for me. And then the next one, which I don't think will be controversial at all because a lot of people either love it or hate it. And that is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Again, I wanted it to be so much more than what it was and it was just disappointing. I loved the first half of this book, loved it. It was so good seeing like the beginnings of The Hunger Games, how it was kind of brought about, how different it was as well compared to what it is in the, the Hunger Games that we know and love. But the second half of the book just went off on a tangent and did not make any sense. And not that, I don't mean like I didn't understand it, I just mean from the character's perspective and point of view, the ending made absolutely no sense. I don't think I've ever hated an ending to a book as much as I hated the ending to this. It's making me mad just talk about it. It's just so, like, you spend, <laughs> I'm getting so mad. Literally an entire book you spent building up to something and that thing just didn't happen. And they just walked away from it and <sighs> it just made me really mad. I don't want to do any spoilers, but yeah, I was so disappointed by this. I gave it three out of five and that was purely because I loved the first half. I really enjoyed that. Um, but I just think if it just stopped halfway through, would have been great. Second half, I don't know, I don't know what happened there. I hate talking badly about books and I am sorry, but yeah, George is gonna kill me for this as well because he really enjoyed this book. I'm sorry, George, I love you. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is another big disappointment of this year. Biggest surprise, my biggest surprise of the year was The Shadow of the Fox Trilogy by Julie Kagawa. I loved this series and I had no expectations of it beforehand. I think I think it was the biggest surprise because I hadn't heard anyone mention it on TikTok, BookTok, Bookstagram, like at all. And the only place I heard about it was on Chloe's books um, here on YouTube and she mentioned that she listened to the audiobook and it was really good. And I, at the time, was looking for new audiobooks to branch out into, especially fantasy audiobooks. And yeah, she mentioned Shadow of the Fox and it became, it ended up being my favourite book of the year so far and also one of my favourite series I've ever read in my life. I loved it so much. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to buy physical copies. I have bought the first book on Kindle as well, just because I loved it so much. My biggest surprise of the year was the Shadow of the Fox trilogy. I keep bringing it up, I keep talking about it, but it's, it's so good. My favorite new author would probably be Elizabeth Acevedo. Yeah, I am on my third book of her works this year. I read The Fire on High. I gave that four stars. I didn't enjoy it as much as The Poet X. 
I love the Poet X. And I'm also currently reading Clap When You Land. And I'm really enjoying this so far, but I'm only about 100 pages in, so I can't say whether I'm going to love it or not, but it's really good. This is also written poetry style, so. Yeah, I think she's my new favourite author of this year. Either that or Julie Kagawa. Shock horror. <laughs> um, I wish I could show you. I literally have books everywhere. Okay, so my newest fictional crush. Now, I really struggled with this one because I don't really get that way about, like, you know, fictional crushes in books. And if I do, it's never like... I like emotional connection. I like stability. I sound so old. Um, so, yeah, for my fictional crush, and this might sound a bit boring, but I don't care, um, was probably Levi from Van Girl by Rainbow Rowell, uh, just because of his emotional stability. <laughs> that sounds so boring. I literally hear the words coming out of my mouth and I'm just like, yeah. That's really disappointing. I obviously like Reese. Reese is pretty cool, but I, I don't get fictional crushes. I'm sorry, that's a really boring answer, I know. Uh, let's just move on to the next one. Um, newest favorite character that has to be my girl. I'm just, I feel like this has just become a Shadow of the Fox fan club video. So sorry about that. My favourite character has to be Yumeko from Shadow of the Fox. I just felt like I really connected to her character. She's just so sweet and innocent, but also like she fights for what she believes in and I love that. Uh, but she's just so, like she's just willing to believe the best in people and I really love that. I really love that in characters. I do enjoy you know, like those badass feisty women, but at the same time, I really enjoy it when they do it with vulnerability and innocence as well. And they're not just really headstrong. They think about things and they, you know, they believe the best in people. I just realized it's raining. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I just realized it started raining and my dog was outside, so I had to go and run and get her in. <laughs> yeah, so newest favorite character, Yumeko from Shadow of the Fox. Question 10 book that made you cry. Now I don't cry at books very often. Um, it's normally very difficult to get me to cry at a book. I only cried at two books this year um, and they were both ends of series which is what tends to get me when you've like come to love characters so much and then you know if the character passes away or something bad happens like that gets me. So yeah the books that have made me cry this year were again <laughs> Night of the Dragon which is the last in the Shadow of the Fox trilogy that one made me cry big time and then also a court of wings and ruin which again made me cry a lot <laughs> uh so yeah those two books are the only ones that made me cry this year but there's still time we'll have to wait and see um a book that made me happy now this one was a really easy one to pick because when I think of this book, it just makes me smile, like I'm doing right now. So it was the A Deal with the Elf King by Elise Covert, like it just made me so happy. It was just a really lovely enemies to lovers, arranged marriage, just wonderful fantasy book about elves and I just enjoyed it so much. I literally, it just makes me happy. It just makes me happy thinking about it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I read it on Kindle Unlimited so it is available on there if you would like to read it but I would love a physical copy as well because I enjoyed it so much. Uh, yeah I just really loved it. I really loved that book. It was so good. I have done a little review on Goodreads as well for it so if you are interested go and check out my Goodreads. I've got quite a few reviews up on there. Most beautiful book I received this year. Now this is the one that I wanted to use for a previous question. Um, my most anticipated read that I have but it is it's literally the most beautiful book I own now and it is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. Look at that. Like it's freaking gorgeous. It's so beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Is that not the most beautiful? Ugh. It's just so beautiful. Yeah, most beautiful book I've gotten this year hands down and I'm pretty sure <laughs> so I only bought this last week but I am like 99% sure that my next fairy loot crate is going to have a version of this in which I won't be mad at because like I wanted this version anyway just because it's so beautiful but yeah I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's gonna include that we'll see we'll see but yeah that is the most beautiful book I've gotten this year and then my last question which is probably one I'm I'm not going to talk about the books in this, I'm just going to show you because there are so many. Uh, basically it's what books do I need to read by the end of the year. Literally all of these! <laughs> all my books! <laughs> 
I've read like 10% of my books. Um, no, in all seriousness, I have quite a lot of arcs that I really need to get through. And then there are loads of just other books that are kind of really high on my to be read pile. I'm just going to quickly show them all because there are so many and I'll be here all day. Um, but if there's any that you are interested in or kind of you look like you might enjoy, I will, like I said before, leave the titles and authors and everything down below. So if you want to check that out, please do. Let me just go get them all. They're on the couch. Over. You know what? I'm going to show you quickly. This is what I'm dealing with. These are all the books I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> and that's a box full of books as well. <laughs> All right, let me just get them. Okay, I'm back. I've got all the books. Um, but I think I'm gonna start with this box that I showed you just a second ago. Um, this only just came in yesterday and I haven't even opened it on TikTok yet. I'm gonna do a video straight after this. Um, but I thought I'd show you guys first. So I am so excited about this. Um, it is a book series that was on my Amazon wish list. My Amazon wish list. And let me just scooch around a bit. That looks a bit more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, yeah, I really wanted this series. Um, and the author reached out to me and was like, yeah, I'm bringing out a new book in, in the series. Would you like it? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I do. And I just said, I was like, you know, your books have been on wishes for ages. So you've just given me the <laughs> motivation to just go and just treat myself and buy them. And she took that as an excuse to just send me literally her entire series and then her new book. I, I was so shocked. Um, so yeah, I have to do a TikTok about it, which will probably come up before this video anyway. But I am so excited. So it is the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson and then her new one, which is The Box in the Woods. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah, she just sent me the entire series. Like, she just sent it me. I was literally intending to buy every single one of these. Um, I'm really glad I waited until this book arrived um, just because I wanted to see what version it'd be whether it would be hardback or paperback and then to see like what ones I'd buy but she freaking sent me them all and they're like dead floppy as well I love floppy paperbacks um yeah so that is they're currently top of my reading list I cannot wait to read them oh my word I'm so excited and it's so generous I can't believe it so so yeah, the Truly Devious series, top of my ARC wish list. ARC slash not ARC wish list. Um, yeah, that is high up on there. I'm going to quickly go through all of my ARCs. So I have Ember of Night by Molly E. Lee, which is, I'm pretty sure, a YA urban fantasy. I'm pretty sure. Again, I haven't read these, so. Hannah and Issues Guide to Fake Dating. It is LGTB contemporary YA romance, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's from the same author as The Hannah Wars, which I really want, but I haven't got yet. So yes, that was sent to me by a publisher as well, so thank you so much. We have Hexed by Julia Tufts. This was again sent by, an art, uh, sent by a publisher. I'm pretty sure this is kind of like middle grade YA urban paranormal fantasy something like that young girl discovers she's a witch and she's in school so yeah middle grade YA I think that is uh this one I'm super excited for this is After Love by Tanya Byrne um and it sounds so good it's a again LGTB contemporary romance about two young girls who fall in love and one of them dies right at the beginning that's not a spoiler it's on the, it's on the synopsis one of them dies but they continue their romance after after life after love get it yeah, I'm super excited about that one. And then the last of my physical arcs, I also have loads of e uh, books and digital arcs, but I won't go into that because I'm always requesting them on NetGalley. Um, but KJ Sutton, wonderful KJ Sutton, sent me her entire Fortuna Sworn series, which I am super excited about. This is an adult fantasy um, kind of romance, high fantasy romance. Uh, series and I am super excited. I made the mistake of saying that they were YA in my TikTok because I thought they were and she quickly corrected me and said these are definitely adult. Take that as you will. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're so beautiful as well. Like look at all of these. They're stunning. Um, so yeah, that is, I think these probably my highest on my to be read pile. I really want to read these. Um, so they're all of my physical arcs that I want to read and then I've got a pile of uh, 
books that I just own myself that I really, really want to get to. Um, so I'll just talk about them quickly. So one of the top of my list is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I will be reading this this month, if not next month, but it's a chunky boy. It's like eight, 900 pages, something like that. Yeah, but I'm so excited. I'm just really in the mood for a big standalone chunky fantasy, high fantasy, and this is exactly, this is exactly it. So yeah, this is gonna be read within the next month or so. I'm really, this is highly anticipated. I really want to read it. A book series that I absolutely love. It's down there, unfortunately you can't see it, but I'm pretty sure I've spoken about it on my, on my channel before. And it is the Gem Flockhart series, uh, Beloved Poison by E.S. Thompson. A historical fiction series set in Victorian London about a woman called Gem Flockhart who is an apothecary um, at an infirmary and she's kind of like a badass Sherlock Holmes, but a woman. And I love it. I absolutely love it. There were four books in the series and she's just brought out the fifth one. And my wonderful, wonderful fiancé, partner, love of my life, <laughs> he got me the fifth one, uh, which is Nightshade. And this is like as high, if not higher, than The Pride of the Orange Tree to read. I am so freaking excited to read this book. I cannot tell you because that series was one of my favourite series of last year. So yeah, that's really high on my wish list. Another one that I really cannot wait to get to but I'm waiting until October because it's a spooky read and I want to get in that like kind of spooky vibe for October. It is The House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. Danielewski? Danielewski. Uh, yeah, it's a huge book and I have spoken about it before. It's a book, it's a horror about a house that's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. That's literally all I know. Uh, but people say it's one of the most atmospheric, eerie, horror books they've read that's kind of a book that sticks with them after they've read it for many years so yeah I'm gonna be reading that in October I cannot wait it's been on my shelf for so long but I, I, I want to wait until October for my like spooky reads video yeah so I really want to read that so I'm sorry if I blabbered on for way too long in this video I probably did um, I've seen other people do these videos and it's been like 15 minutes long and mine's gonna be like an hour I just I just talk too much but I really hope you enjoyed this video um, yeah, if you did, please like and comment. Comment what you want to see me do in the future. Um, I'm always struggling for book ideas, so if you got any, let me know. So, yes, that has been my mid-year book freakout tag. I am freaking out a little bit because I am currently at 60 books and I need to read 110 books this year to reach my Goodreads goal. Um, and I also have a bet going with George for £50 that I can read 110 books. So I have a little bit more incentive to reach that goal. So yeah, I've got another 50 books that I need to read this year in the next five months. So 10 books a month. I can do that. That's fine. I can smash that out. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will hopefully see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye guys.